turned up three quarters of a pound of marijuana, a nine millimeter handgun, and a bag containing $190,000 worth of cash. It's been a bad week of press for a few players during this off season. So we asked the question, our coach is still hanging out with us, Herm Edwards, uh, bad look for the NFL? Yeah, it's, 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 we got an image problem. Mm. We got an image problem. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you see this stuff occurring. Uh, the league doesn't like it. Obviously, they're trying to do a lot of things about it. But here's the problem. We don't have a viewer problem. <laughs> now, there lies the problem, to be quite honest. Now, when, when, when the sponsors, similar to what happened in Minnesota, yeah. mm. start taking things away, sure. owners get nervous. Mm. They get nervous. The, 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 this league is, you know, it, it's, it's about making money. It's business. Mm. And, and we say all those things about the players. I, I think going forward, the tolerance we have, uh, and you got to go through all kind of, you know, hoops and whistles with these players. Uh, and I understand it. You know, coaches are going to take chances on guys that have some red flags. I, I think going forward, the more this continues to grow, these owners are going to start saying, hey, look, I don't want this. We, we don't want this. We don't, we don't want this in my locker room. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are going to have to do something. It starts with the draft. It starts with the free agency. And all, and, and all players, you know, you come in the league from, from different walks of life. We get all that, and you want to support them. But there comes a, a time, if this continues, I mean, we're, we're what, three days, four days after the Super Bowl? Yeah. And we got issues already. Yeah. Yep. We had enough during the season. Yeah. <laughs> and now we got issues again. It's like, will it stop already? And it won't stop. And that doesn't say for all the players that do it right. There's always, well, I've always said this, there's going to be 50 casualties every year on the offseason. Or during the season, there's 50 casualties out of the 1,700 guys. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, this game is watched, it's talked about year around, and when they make an error, it becomes a problem. And going forward, there's going to be some teams that all of a sudden look at these guys with red flags and say, you know what, don't know if I want to deal with that guy. Don't know if I want that guy in my locker room mm -hmm. because of what might happen. And this is, this is where we're going with this. The more these guys continue to get on down and not, down and not for the wrong reason, mm. and it comes across that ticker, sure. it's never good on the offseason. <laughs> it's never good. Stephen A. Do y'all really want me to go here? Go. Yes. Yeah. Look, look, it's, it's, it's sad, it's pathetic. It, it, it really ticks me off, to be quite honest with you. Um, Every incident, it appears, in the off-season, a vast majority of it has to do with marijuana. In some cases, violence against women. In other cases, firearms. Um, and Coach didn't go there, but I will. More than 90% of these cases involve black men. Am I supposed to be happy about this? I mean, we sit there and we look at the problems that we have in our society and we understand that it doesn't, you know, it, it's not completely attached to, to, to just young black males. And we understand that. Johnny Manziel is not black. We see the problems that he's having. Uh, and, and you can point to a lot of things in the past, but primarily in recent memory. If we were to sit there, guys, and I was in studio, and we decided to use that big board behind Kerry, and we put up a mugshot of all of these guys getting arrested and finding themselves in trouble, over 90% of them would be black. Now, some people look at it and they say, well, let's me keep in mind that nearly 80% of the populace in the National Football League happens to be black. So obviously, if there are NFL players that are getting into these kinds of troubles, a vast majority of them are going to be black because that's what the NFL primarily consists of, black males. But when we talk about imagery, when we talk about perception, and we see that, and we recognize how much of a profound impact that the NFL has on our society, if for no other reason because of how conspicuous the product is, and it's constantly in our faces, well then what type of message does that send to, to venues and, and, and situations far beyond the NFL? That's my concern. because. I want to sit there and I want to highlight and make sure that everybody knows that most black folk don't act like that. Most black folk aren't engaged in that kind of behavior. Most black folks aren't doing X, Y, and Z. But when we see, if we were to see these mugshots and we see the names and we see who these individuals are, what's the look? What's the perception? 
And that's my concern, which is why I continuously preach about this. Now, Marshawn Lynch, for example, on a far lighter note, did not get arrested, didn't get in trouble, coach, skip. We all understand that. He just, to me, did something that was in violation of the NFL. The NFL clearly disagreed and elected not to find this man. I happen to believe that's a mistake. Because when you sit there and snub your nose at authority, what you signed on the dotted line to do, and you circumvent your way around it in obviously a very skillful manner because he didn't end up getting fined, ultimately what message does that send? Well, we could have people that buck the system. We could have people that are immune or, or dismissive of authority. We can have those things going on. And then you see why this kind of stuff happens. Because ultimately, the ultimate detriment is punishment. You're going to pay for the things that you do wrong one way or another. And if we don't continue to send that message or we don't work diligently to send that message, this is just going to be the tip of the iceberg. More stuff is going to happen. I'm sorry that I have to say that. I know it makes people un un uncomfortable. The hell with it. You understand? They're not sitting in my position. This is ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. It's alarming. It concerns me a great deal because the imagery of black men is not looking very good when these players find themselves in trouble. And I know the vast majority of NFL players who happen to be black don't act like this, but the few sully it for the many. And that's what's taking place right now. Well, and it really ticks me off. Uh, Stephen, you, you make great points and, and it paints a, a broad picture and that's the problem. And uh, most of these young guys in, in, in today's world, they don't realize, uh, you know, Charlie Sifford passed away. No. Okay. We talked about it All yesterday. Right. Yep. And, and I can remember coming in this league in 1977. Just think about that. 1977, I came in the league, and there were certain positions in this foot in the National Football League. Right. They were going to make sure that you probably didn't play it. Right. Mm. In their own way. Now they didn't tell you that. Okay. They they didn't quite tell you that, but you had a feeling when you looked around. Went, oh, okay. Just look at the quarterback. We we'll talk about the quarterback. And I think some of these young guys don't realize of all the sacrifices that people have made for them to be in position where they, where they can have a dream and play in the National Football League and, and, and experience a lifetime of joy. And, and, and what a few are doing right now, they're painting this broad picture like Stephen H. just said. And I'm an old school guy now. I'm an old soul guy. I, I get it. You know, I grew up in the 60s. I was in the Civil Rights Movement. I, I get all that mess. And when I look at this, it bothers me as well. It really does because there's a few guys and all of a sudden the picture gets painted pretty broad. Sure. And these guys are these guys are throwing away an opportunity to take care of themselves for the rest of their lives. And they don't get it. They don't get it. It's mm -hmm. sad. It is. So for both of you, and strictly for what it's worth, this is my two cents as a white guy for what you just said. Not for one second did I think, oh, more black football players got in trouble. I, I just didn't even, I thought of football players getting yeah. in trouble. And, and I thought about how dumbfounding it is that two of these guys got in trouble as they're right on the cusp of, of big, bigger contracts in glory. Yeah. Like they're right there. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? The nose tackle, especially. The, the nose tackle yeah. for, for Green Bay. He's in negotiations for a new long-term deal to be the anchor of that defensive line. People don't know who he is. Yeah. I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, yeah, LaTroy Guion. We'll, Guion, I'm sure, Guion, yeah. I don't yeah. know. We'll but, figure that out. But still, yeah. he's a really good player from Florida State. Yep. He's, he's really good. And he, you just say, well, what are you thinking? What, what are you doing? But you, not, you, you, Stephen A has preached about this for years on this show. What were you thinking? Nothing. You weren't thinking anything. And then Joseph Randall. He's he's a really talented young man. He is. Every well, time he touched the ball this year, good things happen. No doubt. So I thought maybe he had his wake up call with the shoplifting, and I no. thought he was so shamed by that. Maybe maybe that'll wake him up and send him down the right path. Well, this is not a huge thing, this marijuana thing at the hotel, but it's still. You're, you're listen. They could lose Demarco Murray. They could. He could and be he'd gone. Be next to up. He could be the guy next year. Yeah. He could be your starting running back. Yeah. Go ahead, Skip. Here's the problem, is that, and, and I get it, you know, we fall in love with talent. We fall in love with talent, so we'll give it another chance. I mean, you talk about DeMar, you, you talk about Randall, mm -hmm. his deal with the underwear, he ended up getting a commercial. Right. 
It became almost like a joke. Like, really? I mean, what are we doing here? And I think it's over and over. We see okay. it. And then we say, we got to give God another chance. I get all that. But here's the problem. You're hurting. You're just hurting the image of the whole league. Okay. It, you, it, you are. But see, for most fans, I think it goes in one eye and out the other. It does. Right? Day after day. It does. But just, Stephen A. is well, from the old school like me. And he's watching this unfold. Yep. And I'm watching it unfold. Mm -hmm. And like my daddy used to say, son, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Not but, that guy. Well, you know what it is, Coach, and it's something, and it's something we haven't brought up before. But Skip, I need you to hear what I'm about to right. say, and I appreciate where you were coming from, and I appreciate your comments about that. But you also have to understand that you're in the minority, and you're going to think differently than myself and Coach Herm Edwards when it comes to this reality. When you sit there and say you just looked at a football player, you didn't look at a black football player. It's not that we're looking at a black football player. We're looking at black men. We're looking at the imagery and we're okay. looking at the residual impact that it ultimately is going to have when folks are walking out there in the real world who don't have those opportunities, but they happen to be black, but they happen to carry themselves in a similar situation to some of these guys in the public eye and how people are going to perceive them to be before giving them an opportunity to show who they truly are. And also we take into account, you know, we're about to have Snoop Dogg on in a few minutes and stuff like that. We all know that him and many, many others, particularly in the hip hop community, have gone through their trials and tribulations throughout life. But the point is, you're coming from, a, from, from the depths and you climb and climb and climb. And the person and the man that you become ultimately is what we have to judge you by and we grow to appreciate it because we understand the depths with which you come whereas in the case of an nfl player you've already arrived and now you're regressing because you got money and you got paid now you're acting worse than you did when you were younger yeah 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 Stephen a says right that's the difference you, 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 you reach your ultimate goal which and now you want to screw it up right yeah well, you got the blessings really? that you prayed yeah. for Stop. and now you don't know how to behave when thank, you get the thank blessings. you kerry don't that's be absolutely that guy right yeah don't be that guy. Yep. Let somebody else Messing do it. with your blessing. Messing yes. with your blessing. Ah.